Right, I've um, gone a little further forward with modeling since uh, the last clip. Um, and at the moment, I'm just rendering what I've got. Um, so I'm going to leave that going in the background for now. But I'll just have a, I'll give you a quick look at that. Um, what you will have noticed since the last one, I just went ahead and modeled a few extra things just as I saw them. And one of them was simply just to put a like a step into the pool area here. Um, and in fact, on the bigger pool, which is further down, that's got two steps in it. Um, and I've just curved the inside uh, lip of this as well, which because it's looking very hard edged. Um, I've also modeled some um, sun lounges, uh, just a modern, simple, curvy shape, uh, which I still may well, well tweak a little bit, but I've just added some of these down the side of this pool. In the cloner, and um, I will show. You, oh, also, I've I've gone on and just finished off the bridges. Um, you can see that I've added a. I basically switched it from the U shape that I was using the profile to the H shape again, and uh, made it editable, and just did the top end or the top half of it in this same kind of transparent glass here. Anyway, I'll nip into the file to have a look at this. So. Uh, I'm going to go to edit cam and turn off the main cloner. Um, and you, you can see what I've done. So as I said, um, let's put the uh, quick shading lines on. All I've done here is I've uh, you know, just put a loop cut on the inside of this extrusion of the pool and uh, extruded out these two blocks to make a step. Um, again, Colin, Colin's been in use to help me with scaling and I've uh, modeled these simple uh, sun lounges, which is essentially just working in a side view, making a curvy spline with the spline arc tool um, and uh, sweeping that along a profile, which is a rectangle with rounded ends. There's nothing much to it, really. Um, also, you'll notice what I've done is I've taken out the area there here where the fences were. Um, obviously, that was running over the pool, so I've removed that. Uh, and I'll just show you how I did that. Again, it was a simple process, but uh, sometimes it's not always clear to do these things uh, with splines. Um, let me find the fences. There we go. Uh, I think that's the one. No, that's the wrong one. Which one is it? Oh, hang on, we're in symmetrical mode, so that might not help. Just wonder if we were looking at the cloned or the uh, reverse side. Right, why is that not showing up? Okay, sweep. There it is, that one. So what I did, basically, uh, I'll just put that into points mode, and you can see the spline, which is, the, this is being swept along, uh, this rectangle. Um, and let's say, for instance, I decided that I wanted to just make this area here, remove this fence. Then I just click on the point there and go to uh, Mesh Spline Break Segment. And that instantly breaks that off. And then all you've got to do from there on in is just remove the next point along uh, and so on until you've you know, you've cleared the gap you want. Um, if you just try and do it where you just delete the point, then you just delete the point and it makes no difference. It doesn't alter this at all. I, you know, I can do it here. That's all it does. So uh, just remember to go and do uh, break segment. That's the way to um, separate out a, or make a gap in a spline. So that's done. Oh, the other thing I've done as well is I went into the uh, balcony areas, um, which were bothering me because it still had the white wall uh, in here and it was quite thick it had the same thickness uh, at the back of it and I wanted it I, I didn't want to really explain how anybody got from being in that space into this but I certainly needed it to look like it was possible and this was you know a separate material like maybe this slides over or something it's a door um, so all I've done is uh, selected the back faces of all of these balconies and then just push them further back into the mesh um, so they're, they're roughly level with the uh, with the, the window profile here. And I've colored it with the same black um, of the window frame. 
Uh, I don't know whether I did this in the last video or not, but I also um, turned round the um, uh, the wood planking. I just uh, turned that round uh, 90 degrees, so it was you know facing outwards rather than along with the rest of the architecture. And uh, I went into these recesses, which we made a long time ago when we were building the first. Uh, iteration of the accommodation and um, basically just pulled I pushed those right to the back but I pulled them a little further forward so they're visible and I've actually put um, a version of this material on them without any luminosity it's just a glossy reflective uh, piece of glass um, I've considered I may well still go in there and just put in a little a little frame or just a, a central pillar so it looks like it's a doorway that might slide apart but um, it's not a big priority at the moment. I'm not anywhere near it or close to it in most renders I've got planned. Uh, in terms of the bridge, uh, I just polished that off really. Uh, I switched that over to an H profile instead of uh, uh, the U. So it's roughly the same height, but obviously the bridge or the floor part is in the middle of the, the profile. And um, I've just arranged that so it's sort of resting on the or joining up with the uh, you know the bit here of extruded out and landing just there, um, and I've also uh, made this area the top part of it uh, into the same glass wall that's along here, so uh, that just sort of joins up a bit more neatly. Um, and at the moment, I'm not entirely sure whether to have one of these bridges uh, in every one of these sections. Um, just going back to the picture viewer, I don't know whether that looks too too often or too regular but um, they are a significant distance apart when you consider the kind of scale so I guess it probably makes sense but um, as yet I'm not decided I may well just uh, remove one of them but what I'm, I'm going to do in a moment is uh, in, introduce another one of these um, habitat profiles into the cloner so that uh, and change the color of uh, its zone if you like make it a, I'm probably going to make that one a sort of ready brown um, and I may well do the next one as well, just so we can see that there's a progression of colors as it goes up. Um, beyond this point, it's probably not noticeable, but certainly in these two, you can see them quite clearly. Uh, what else? Um, I think that's probably it really, just sort of minor tweaks and changes that I thought about after I finished recording last time. Um, the other thing, uh, just another checklist of things I've got to do, it's so close to the end now really, uh, is I just want to uh, create a train monorail type thing that's going to go in here. Um, so I need to model that in a separate document and bring it in. Um, and then it will be a case of bringing in some human figures from whatever I've got in my library. They might not all be suitable or perfect for this particular environment. I need to look at getting hold of some uh, ones that are sort of more suitable for a, a resort or leisure type uh, situation. I think most of the ones I've got are either business people or shoppers from previous jobs. Um, and also I, what I want to do in the, uh, in the ground terrain is uh, put in some little boats or something on the shoreline and uh, possibly even a little cruiser in the water if there's enough room for that kind of size. Um, and just make it look a bit sort of more lived in. Uh, and then in some places as well, I want to stick in the odd chair and table or something in these balconies uh, where the camera's viewing them. Um, so it's just down to the detail stuff now. Uh, it's, I think, essentially done otherwise. Uh, I'm quite happy with the way it looks in most regards. Um, it's a few of these details to take care of and then setting up various renders and then uh, jobs done. So uh, moving on. So the next thing I want to do is uh, create the multiple uh, versions of this uh, profile with different colors uh, for the zones. So uh, the way that I'm going to do that is I'm going to duplicate this main cloner um, because I'm going to need to just put these clones alone 
i.e. just the three profiles, I think, just because I need them to just clone the three of those in succession the same way that this one is cloned. And I've got too much else going on in the null for the cloner at the moment. So uh, I want to break this up. So what I'm going to do is uh, duplicate that, copy and paste. And in this one here, which is just going to be for the clone profiles, I'm going to get rid of uh, everything but the habitat section. Um, and even those can go, I think. Uh, and what I will do is leave that symmetry get rid of these uh, and I equally don't need a null oops I'll just get rid of the last thing I'll put in there let's just drag those out first let's get rid of that and I'm just going to turn off this main where are we main cloner is turned off it's going to make it invisible and oh no, I deleted the wrong things. Yeah. Uh, right, it's going to drag that one out of the way first. That goes into the cloner. That can be deleted. That goes up here, and that can go right now. So what that basically has done is taken, it's not taken everything out yet, but if I just go into here and get rid of the uh, this habitat section, then hopefully between the two, they take taking care of the same job. I'm just going to bring this one down actually, so it's uh, back in the colony null. Uh, move that vapor vent one up and out of the way. And so if I turn this one on, not that one. Uh, this one is obviously on already. Uh, just check this one. then all of it should be fine. I'm just going to turn both the clones on. And this one. I'm just going to quickly go to the habitat cam to have a look. Oh uh, yeah, that's a little odd. <laughs> um, let's close that. Okay, so I'm just going to take this outside of there for a minute. Ah, oh, that leak is the symmetry objects in there. It's, that's the gap. It's creating this gap in between the two where the rest of the clones. So I'll just take that out. I didn't think about that. So what I essentially need to do with this is to um, put this inside the symmetry object and put the symmetry object inside the cloner. So um, if I turn the symmetry on, you'll see what that's doing. Um, I'm just gonna name this to Habitat Cloner. And what I need to do is basically duplicate this symmetry object. I'm gonna duplicate it twice. And in this one, I'm just going to go down and find my yellow material, which is on the, the first one. And in fact, I need to copy that. Copy paste. And then I'll change the color of this one to a kind of a rusty brown. A little bit more red. Trying to keep it relatively neutral, really. Or maybe that's about right, actually, from the 
tone. Uh, right, I'm going to drag that into the second one of these. So I'm just going to overwrite the yellow materials in that particular group. And then uh, I'm just going to paste again, which will just give me another version of the yellow. And I'll change that to some blue. Not too saturated. Lighter. Okay. Uh, and I'm going to put that on these two yellow textures. So now hopefully, I'm just going to switch the display to quick shading. Hopefully that's duplicating them. in order because it's set to iterate. So it should be blue, brown, yellow. And then going back to blue again, which hopefully we won't see in the distance anyway. I don't really feel like I need to add another one to it. Um, I'm going to swap them around because I want the yellow to be first. Uh, and I think I want the brown to be the next one I see. So now uh, the thing to check is that the main cloner, uh, where's the symmetry? There it is. Is still working as expected, and it looks like it is because everything's where it should be. Uh, yeah, the water's in place. The sun lounges are there. And we have different colors in each iteration. So that's great. Um, so let's just get the camera back to somewhere uh, likable. <laughs> Doesn't have the runner. Narrowed viewpoint. roughly where it was I think. So that's that taken care of. Um, just make sure everything's nicely organized still. Habitat cloner, uh, I would like that to go in the colony group. And let's switch this to other structure. Cloner. Uh, whether that's going to help me or not, I don't know, but it uh, feels better to name it something else now because it isn't really the, the only main cloner as such. Um, right, they're okay. I don't think there's anything else I need to turn on or indeed off in there. So really, for the most part, I can close that up, which makes it a bit neater. Okay. Now, what's next on the list? I'm just going to save that. Kind of quick look at the render that's going on in the background actually. Let's get in there. It's going to zoom to 200%. So I'll look at the detail a bit. So, ideally, uh, and I'll probably have to add that at a later point, um, I want some, uh, some nice scanned 3D humans uh, in the pool. Um, on the lounges or just sort of around this area, just chilling out basically. Uh, maybe walking or jogging along these promenades uh, and below, of course. Uh, and I'm going to put some boats, so that's the next thing to do with boats and such like down here. 
and you know maybe people crossing the bridge a few over on the other side so you can get a sense of scale um, I've even considered putting like some kind of hang glider or something coming up here in the sky on the top of the dome because it's fairly high up there uh, probably people just sort of uh, lazing about on the beachy bits so I think the first thing to do um, will be to maybe import some of these uh, whatever humans I've got. I'm just going to have a look actually, see what I've got in the content browser. Now I know there's some in the uh, the normal presets, uh, which I think are in Visualize. Uh, under humans. There we go. We've got low resolution and medium resolution. We might be able to use some of these in the distance. These low res ones. Uh, they're not particularly great close up, but um, I'm sure they'll be okay in the distance. So uh, I'm going to maybe bring one in of these just to stick over on the bridge or something. Just to show the process of that, really. I mean, it's fairly obvious, but um, this guy looks like he's walking with some purpose. Uh, so I'm going to double click on that. Uh, hopefully, that's, yeah, it has. Put that in. So what I'm going to do is um, turn off the cloners again. And go to edit cam, which has got more chance of being roughly in the vicinity of this guy, I think. Uh, and press O to zoom to him. And he's very big. So uh, what I'm going to do is going to, I'm going to bring Colin <laughs> to the same place, I'm using myself here. Um, tools, uh, arrange objects, transfer, and I want to transfer to this guy. So the reason I'm doing that is so that Colin's in a roughly the same space and I'm going to scale down to him. So I'm going to see if I can do this uh, on the scale option and I'm going to go for I know this is not be quite right. I think I'm going to go for 0 0.1 first to see what this does. 0 0.1, 0 0.1. Oh, not too far off. Uh, not too far off at all, actually. So from here, I think I can do maybe 0 0.8. I'd say that's almost perfect. Yeah, that's fine. So um, uh, I'm going to conveniently just move this guy down to the bridge since we're right in the center of the scene, as is the bridge. using the one, two, three keys to uh, move myself around it. There you go, You're just sort of making uh, contact without sinking so much into the ground, it's just enough. Uh, so obviously he's in the center of the bridge right now. Uh, the only problem with this particular scenario is that obviously he will be um, when I put this back in the cloner, he won't be anywhere near this bridge. So I have to add this into one of the clone groups, which means he does get cloned every single time. But um, uh, the alternative is to, uh, and probably the ideal method is once we've uh, got all the figures in at the size we want them, in fact, is to just move them actually down to the cloner that's in the foreground, uh, you know, the group. Um, 
rather than doing it here. But anyway, that's scaled to the right size. So at least I know what the, the pattern is. So let's see what else, uh, or oh, sorry, what the scale is. Let's see what else we can put in. Um, what have we got in the medium resolution? Oh, that's cool. Uh, probably use that one as well. Again, I'm not, these are not necessarily exactly what I want, but um, I think just for the sake of getting some population in there, these will do. Um, right, I'm gonna do one at a time, never mind. These are clearly higher resolution scans. So it's taken a while to come in. Uh, Let's go for that one. Let's put the uh, teenager in there as well. Right, so I'm going back to my object manager and these uh, three new figures are in and I'm going to press O to zoom out to them, to their scale, if I can. There we go. Uh, and I'll scale these together. So uh, we started at 0.1. I could probably do the maths on this to work it out exactly, but that's too much strain. So and now I need them to be 0 0.8, 0 0.8, 0 0.8. Eight, apply. Just going to zoom to them. Well, that's roughly the same. Um, okay, I'm going to move them down to the bridge for now because I just want them to be in the same uh, physical location as the other guy. initially so um, what I'm going to do is is grab all these together now I'm going to go back down to the cloned version of these uh, of the setup and I'm going to um, well I'm just going to pull these down actually into view so I'm going to go to the uh, habitat cam and I know that they're on the y-axis so I'm just going to keep uh, pulling downwards until they appear hopefully in my scene just going to come out of this all together actually so I can see if we've got lost anywhere oh, they're still up <laughs> Quite a cozy huddle of going on there. Okay, so they're reunited back on the bridge again. So since we're here, I'm going to set the guy up that's on the bridge. And these are the three. Let's make a decision and put some of them somewhere near the camera. Which is currently over here, ideally. Let's put them in there. Which is not probably remotely where I think it is. No, it's still out in space. Um, and I'm going to go to my no, I'll do this from here. 
So I just want to quick look where they are actually in the edit cam, in the habitat cam, if I can speak. Uh, okay, so I'm going to move these up to this deck. Not too far. Right. Coming out of that cam just into some default camera. And press O to zoom. There we go. So what I'm going to do is uh, put the couple up on this balcony. them wherever way we think is best which I can alter when we're uh, in a better view um, no <laughs> it's certainly nice to get like real figures in here though because then you really do start to get a sense of scale and it, just even by doing this you know when you, you consider we'd be setting up renders different camera viewpoints um, it's kind of fabulous that you can, you know, you look at this and think, well, that huge landscape is going to be in the background. And already I'm starting to think about setting depth of field distances and all that kind of thing. Uh, so let's put a couple of these other guys that we've got left down. Uh, well, they are down here already, actually. I'm just going to zoom to those as well. Right, so I'm going to put him, in fact, I'm going to have to move him again because the ground's going to move relative to where he is. Just put him a bit further along. There we go. It's contemplating life. Uh, and this girl can be maybe walking this way. Otherwise, she looks like she's about to take a uh, survey for him to fill in. I'm asking him whether he would book another holiday on this particular resort, by the way. Okay, let's rotate a little bit more. So what I'm going to do um, is just go back to my edit cam and uh, sorry, my habitat cam and see if I can set up something a bit closer to make the most of these. People. He's always going to be in the distance, I'm afraid. Where's that couple? Okay. Maybe I'll make it about them. Make a focus on them. Not that about them, but uh, let's get back a little bit. Uh, and in this case as well, I think what I'm going to do is move him back a little bit. Not too far along because the foliage will probably cover him up. That's going to be here. Um, put her nearer to the pool. She 
you're looking for somebody to survey. Um, I'm just going to grab these three and do a render uh, active objects. Just going to see if they're looking correct. They've got normals on them, and I'm not sure that they're set up right. They seem to be okay. Hopefully, within the context of everything else and the light bouncing from the environment around them, they might look a little better. Uh, let me just look at the. Assuming this is the texture of these guys. What's going on in the reflectance? Oh wow, that would set up quite well. Cool. Okay, I think I'll trust their setup. These obviously been set up perfectly for Cinema 4D, I'm assuming. Um, where's that guy? Is he actually? Oh, he's on the bridge. I don't know if we're going to see him in this distance, but that is okay. So, um, I'm going to leave that set as our habitat cam placement. Um, uh, and what I'm going to do is just group these. Hulk G. One people. Now the other thing is obviously I've, I'm placing these specifically where I want them um, for any given render and I, I will do that for any other figure that I bring in. I'll, I'll set them up relative to where I am and what I want to see. Um, but equally if you were sort of wanting to fill the scene or you know put a load of people that were randomly walking or standing on these sort of uh, promenades here then you could do you could do them exactly the same way. You could use a cloner um, just as it's been done uh, to you know distribute trees on these bits here you could uh, make selections of the the ground uh, around the trees uh, and all this area here kind of the patio or whatever and uh, and you can make that um, the base for your clones and and just drop a bunch of well obviously not that you want lots of couples looking the same but you know if you've got various different walking people and standing people you just stick them under a cloner and they could, you know scatter them along this space um, and certainly I may even consider doing that for the for the ones that are over the other side. If I want to show some people in the distance, just to, again, use the low poly ones, then I may well do that just to distribute a bunch of random ones. Um, there are other plugins for doing that and, uh, you know, even animated them. But um, in this for this instance, I'm just going to uh, place them as I see fit. So I'm going to just uh, make that invisible in the editor. I don't need to see that anymore. Um, and the next thing will be to add or source um, some boats to go in the water and on the beach. I'm just actually going to um, stick one of our people, or maybe the couple, just make a copy of those. And I'm going to put them down in the, uh, the environment to uh, get a sense of the scale. So uh, I'm going to come out of this camera and drag this down. Just want to get an idea of how big people are in that landscape. I don't know, I've used Colin before in that context, but I want to see it in relation to the water so I can work out what sort of size boat I can put in. So uh, I need to put the landscape back on, uh, which is there, terrain. Clones are off, that's fine. Uh, I'm going to turn off Enhanced OpenGL, I don't want to see the noise. There they are. Right, I think I can put a fairly decent sized boat down there. A little cruiser. Yeah, that should be fine. Um, I'll put that displacer on for now actually just to Move the water out of the way, move the water into the trench a bit. Okay, so I'm going to look in my library to see what I've got. 
So I found these two um, models that I used in my New Eden image, the previous uh, space colony I did. Um, there's this one and this one. They're not particularly big boats, but I think possibly that one's viable in that landscape. Um, I'm going to copy it over and try it out. What I'm going to do is use the tool again to uh, transfer its placement to where these people are, which is this couple, I think. Yeah, I'll just click on it straight away. Big, big boat. I can just scale that down now. I'm just going to press O to zoom in. Uh, which helps me scale them. I'll scale the boat relative to the people. Clearly at the moment it's still too big. Let's just have a look at that. So they were standing on the top of that. Let's just move them up into the air and move the boat up again as well. Okay, so I've got a bit small with the boat. The scale's a little curious there with the, the size of the seats. Um, just trying to see their feet. Okay, so clearly that boat can be a little bit smaller. That's probably about realistic, I think. You probably have to duck down to get into the seats anyway. Okay, so now I know that, I can uh, grab the boat and put it somewhere in the scene. Uh, What I need to do, in fact, is just go to the uh, water. Which I think will be that one there. I'll just turn that off for a minute and then I can place the boat. about that. I'll do. And in fact, I'm just going to move these people. Onto the deck of the boat, why not? Uh, 
having their uh, Titanic moment without hopefully sinking. Well, that'll do. So at the end of my last session yesterday, um, where I was setting up the, uh, or showing importing some figures from the content library in Cinema 4D, um, and bringing them in and placing them in both places in the scene, um, I did these couple of renders. Uh, but then I went online to, uh, I discovered that these were made by a company called Render People. So I looked them up online um, uh, and had a look at the kind of thing they do. And they, they offer posed and rigged people. Um, so I had a little browse in the shop and uh, just looked for posed because I don't really need rigged. And uh, noticed they've got these various categories down here, the various uh, options, uh, styles of characters. So I, of course, did a look on spa and beach swimwear, which is, absolutely perfect for the for the image I'm working on uh, and I had a good browse through and I got chatting uh, to the, a guy here Andreas who actually turns out to be the CEO of this company so we were having to talk about what I was doing and I ended up sending him the renders um, uh, and showing him what I was doing with his work uh, with his products and uh, I was absolutely amazed this morning I got an email from him saying um, that he was donating 24 uh, figures to me for this project uh, for the cause because he was just so enamored with what what we were up to and uh, and there you go he's provided all these figures so I'm over the moon about that thank you so much Andreas it's amazing um, so what I'm going to do is show you uh, what they're like um, I've already got them in my content library um, you see they're all in here in their own folders um, but what I was really surprised about uh, and equally pleased was the fact that they've got lots of different versions. You've got ones that are already set up for say Corona Render and V-Ray as well as the native standard or physical. Um, and obviously they come in OBJ formats as well, but also they come in two different uh, poly reses. So there's a, a 30K and 100K um, versions of the, the figures. So I'm just gonna open one of these up. Um, if you just double click on this don't know if it's a Cinema 4D file, it's already set up with its own uh, ambient occlusion and radiosity uh, GI settings, which is fine and uh, probably shows them off to their best. But um, equally, you can just merge them into whatever scene you're working on, which is where I prefer to work. But I just want to open this one up to show you the quality of it. Uh, right, I'll be loading the, the uh, texture in now. I'll wait for that to appear. There we go. So this is a 30, 30K poly mesh, which I'll show you now. And you can see that's that's pretty dense. It's uh, It's got a lot of detail in it as it is. Um, so that these, that res, they're probably perfect for close up, but they're certainly perfect for, you know, middle distance and uh, the kind of thing you typically use, I guess, in arch viz. Um, but equally, uh, if we look at the 100K version, I'm just going to turn the 30K version off. And it's loaded in the texture. Um, put that back to lines. And you can see how dense that is. There is an awful lot of detail in this model, uh, 100K. So I'm fairly confident that actually these could be used, uh, you know, as foreground figures, as the focus of any image, you know, that with the that you see in the background, which uh, opens up the possibilities for me with the kind of uh, number of renders I'd like to do for this project. But uh, what I was also amazed about, let me just move that to the side. Um, just put that into that mode. Uh, is uh, let's put this on as well, so we can preview it. Uh, quickly nip into render settings and switch that to physical and automatic. And maybe turn it down to 10, just to make it better quality. Uh, I've got to wait for that to catch up. In fact, I'm just going to lift the quality that further. Uh, but also, I'm going to just pull in a, an HDRI uh, and 
open the content browser of that. Something a bit more colorful. And just let it render. At the moment, there's, there's no GI in the scene, so it's not visibly having any real effect, that uh, HDRI. But what I want to show you, let's just pick the right one. That material there. Is aside from you know the, the uh, expected color map and the normal map, which are all 8K incidentally, um, it's in the reflectance channel. It's set up with a layer for every single aspect of this model. So you've got one for skin, hair, shirt, jeans, shoes, mobile, whatever the character is. It's got a different uh, reflectance setup for that particular isolated part of the mesh. If we go in here to layer mask, just click on skin. You can see that it's already been set up um, with the UV map so that you've got everything isolated ready, which is really, really useful. Um, just to prove the point, uh, it's set up with Fresnel as well. I'm just going to turn that off so I get more obvious reflection. Um, if I go into here and just turn up the skin layer, you can see that sort of boost in the reflection across the skin. Um, and if I just turn down, say, the, the roughness. You've instantly got the ability to uh, isolate the skin and make it look wet, um, which, is, again, in, in the example of the, the image that I'm doing at the moment, is perfect because I can have people in the swimming costumes in the pool or just having got out of the pool uh, and make them look like they're wet um, with so little effort. It's all set up for you. It's all here in different layers and I can tweak the, the hair and change that to the kind of reflectivity or specularity I want. And equally, I guess I could go in and alter the clothes and even give them color tints if I wanted to. It really is a very, very useful uh, uh, facility to have really and have it all set up ready for you is just perfect. So absolutely blown away by these. So thanks ever so much, Andreas. Um, these are going to be very useful and uh, I would recommend anybody to go and check out stuff at uh, renderpeople.com because they've they've got the goods. This was the last render we were looking at, but uh, obviously now I've got some um, really good quality figures. I shall uh, import them, replace anything I've got here and, and do various renders. So I'm just going to set one up to begin with. Um, but what I did want to show you is I also uh, quickly added a few cameras uh, in different points and I shall obviously do a lot more of these. But again, just to give you the idea of... of uh, in this case, I'm making the most of the environment I've created and treating it like a, an arch or arc viz, whichever way you want to call it, um, project and, uh, you know, doing multiple renders from within it. So I did set up a few different viewpoints that I quite liked. Obviously set this up to view this pool and see the, the landscape disappearing off into the distance. And I'll obviously add some uh, characters in the pool there and on the side here. Uh, and I'll probably put some of the um, sun lounges here as well. Um, I found this one as well, which I thought was quite nice, the bridge cam. Again, making the most of looking up into the environment and uh, getting a nice interesting angle. I'll put some people on the bridge. And uh, boat cam, which well, is quite nice, just having the boat, you know, in, in situ with the, the, again, the landscape disappearing off. And I did another version of that, which was more dramatic sort of viewpoint looking up. Um, so a different sort of idea. Um, so yeah, that's the, the, the different uh, ones I've come up with. Uh, and no doubt I'll come up with some more, but um, that gives you the idea of, uh, of the, you know, the reason for doing this. And I mean, equally as well, I can also set these up to be different kind of camera settings at the moment. That's set to 36, but I mean, you know, I could probably push that into being properly widescreen and going in and uh, increasing the drama even more if I wanted to. Um, I think the secret with any of these particular uh, things to find the right viewpoint is to just experiment and uh, have fun going and exploring the environment you've created. I think that's the secret. Right. Uh, I'm going to actually put this back to where it was. View undo view. Oh, it's not taking me out there now. Let's put me somewhere else. Uh, I've got that to 36. There we go. That's where we're at. 
Okay, so um, now that I've got these uh, this lovely library of figures, um, I need to import them and decide on what render I'm just going to sort of finalize on. And one I particularly liked was one that I did uh, in Photoshop, or well, got in Photoshop, is this viewpoint here where I could have a few people in the pool and around this area by the lounges. So I'm going to sort of try and navigate back to this rough viewpoint and then uh, bring in some of the figures that will bring it to life really. So um, I'm going to go back to Habitat Cam, uh, which I think this is the camera that I moved really. Yeah, this is, I'm roughly in the same area. Let's go and bring this across so I can get more of my view in. Something like that. It's quite nice to kind of put both of those in there. Now, where was I? It kind of goes off at the top corner. It's about the same. Maybe just pull back a fraction. It's quite nice getting that sort of join in of the pool. Uh, I do like being able to see down to the lower deck as well. So I think maybe I'll go there with that. Cool. Um, Right, so that's set up for Habitat Cam. Now I'm going to go out of all of these cameras and uh, I think that one should be pull cam, isn't it? Yeah, okay, so I can move out of this. And what I'm going to do is uh, turn off the cloner for now. Close this up. Close that up. And uh, let's just turn the cloners off for the trees. I don't want those doing any processing at all. And turn those off for now. And what I'm going to do is go into the content browser and pick some figures that I'm going to use for this. So, um, what I'm going to do actually is just very quickly nip back to um, the Render People website because I've still got stuff stored in a cart which shows me the ones I've bought or I've been donated, sorry. Uh, and I can find a reference to the ones I most want. So I think I'm going to put Kent in the pool. Uh, Jessica outside of it. So I'm just going to grab those two to begin with. Uh, That's something else. Now, which one was it? Oh, wait, it was particularly suitable. I'm going to go with the 30k versions of these. Um, so I'm not going to be particularly close to them. Uh, but I think they will be more than adequate. So with the native version, just going to merge that in. And there was Kent posed 04. So I'm going to find that guy. Uh, there we go. 30k native, merge. I'm going to get them all in one go because uh, I'm going to scale them down together. It just makes it a bit more streamlined. Um, what else have we got? Uh, got two versions of Laura Pose with laying down, which are pretty good. I think I might use those. 
So we've got other ones here that are going to be used elsewhere in the colony, like somebody drinking a coffee on the balcony, um, somebody taking uh, a interesting shot somewhere. So I'm going to go with I'm probably going to take tilde posed 05, Andrew posed 04, and Laura posed 01. Right. Let's get these in. Andrew posed 04, that's the one we've selected. I go for a, another 30k one. And oh, is it tilde posed? Thirty K native, that's what we need. And Laura posed O one, that was the Uh, sitting figure. There we go. Well, there it is. Okay, merge. When you're ready. Right, so I'm just going to click on O to zoom to where they are. Still loading uh, a couple of textures and I think, yeah. There's the thing to remember actually, there's a lot of textures in with these. There's 8K, 8K color map, 8K normal map, and then obviously many multiple versions of the masks, they're all 8K in the reflectance channel. So I suppose you have to give them a little bit of a time to load in, makes sense. Yeah, still at it. Right, so based on the previous scale, I can just um, scale these down initially to 0.1. Apply. And then 0.8. Uh, and then I'm just going to drag these all down. together uh, I'm just going to turn the cloners back on actually so habitat cloner and other structure cloner and And then just move those down, go into Habitat Cam, and we can see that the figures are over there. So we'll bring them over here. So I'm going to uh, leave that camera now and um, 
In fact, let's just make this simpler. I'm going to keep that camera, but I'm going to make a duplicate of it. I'm just going to uh, command drag. And then I'm going to make this my one that I move around with. Just to navigate around this particular part of the scene. So Kent uh, is going to go in the pool. Preferably on the edge of it. Although it may not be quite the correct height for this pool because this is actually quite a shallow pool. He might have to be in one of the uh, the pools that are on the lower deck, which are deeper. Um, but this may not be the one for this particular image. <laughs> Unless he's just uh, holding his arms in space that way. Uh, I suppose the only way we could do it actually is to put him to the edge of the pool. Not being able to see his knees as long as they don't... Uh, come out through the floor visibly oops Right, I'm just going to uh, turn off the Y axis, but leave it on X and Z, and it can only move laterally then. So I can just um, move it without needing to actually move the actual handles. I can just move it in free space, as it were. I'm just going to lower him down to make contact with the side of the pool. And thankfully, because of his feet sticking out from my viewpoint, I don't think so, we can probably get away with that. Um, uh, in fact, I think I'm going to move him to. The corner a bit, rotate him around so he's not looking straight at the camera. Looking out at the view, which is better. Uh, move him across. There we go. If we don't see his feet, we'll be fine. Uh, right, who have we got in here? We've got Andrew, who who is also in trunks. Maybe he's just standing. Or maybe he's on the step even. I'll lower him down. Uh, getting close so we can see where the uh, contact points are. Now let's move him slightly to the edge of the step so it's just coming out. The detail on these really is staggering because that's, I mean, this is only the 30k version, but it looks amazing, really. That's fine. I'm being a bit of a stickler here because this is underwater and you're not going to see that 
minor detail, but um, I think it's worth giving it a bit of attention. Right, uh, so this one, Tilda, uh, I was actually going to put her up in one of the um, balconies. I think that'd be quite cool. Although, no, let's put her down here and I'll put somebody else in the balcony. In fact, I might even leave the couple up there so I can still see them. I'm just going to go back to my uh, habitat cam to get an idea of what I'm placement of things. I think I'll put her here and make a bit more of a foreground figure. At least there. That looks good to me. Uh, so back to that camera. I hope to zoom in. Uh, and I want to lower her to the floor. So zoom in closer to that. This is the other way to do it. Sometimes just get underneath. There we go. Now I'm just going to go back to my uh, main camera and just alter her rotation a little bit. It's a bit posy, I think, that she's looking at the camera that way. So maybe where she was is fine. That's quite nice, I think. Uh, okay, so who have we got now? Uh, we've got Jessica. Step up, Jessica. Uh, quick look in there again. And she looks like she might just be going into the pool or just come out. So let's move her to... Uh, here. She's eyeing up Tilda and saying, are you going in? <laughs> right, zoom in. Oh, lower her down. This is one of our holiday reps, I think. She's looking a bit business-like to be uh, standing by a pool. She's come to talk about timeshares. Um, Hmm, where do I want her? I'm going to move this uh, character here. She'll still be in the scene, but I'm just going to move her out of the way a little bit. And then we've got a lounging character, Laura. Uh, it would be nice to put her on a sun lounger, I think. Um, so let's zoom in on her. She's, on a, she's been posed on a flat surface, or scanned on a flat surface, so not quite right for this, but um, I might be able to get away with it. Maybe we just make a sit on the side of the chair. No, do it that way. Let's 
So can do that. Going back into the dip. Oops, going the wrong way with that. Actually, I don't think I'm going to kind of make her work in this context, I think. Despite the fact there's all these sun lounges here, I'm going to make her a little bit awkward and place her uh, here on the floor. Just can't please some people. So she needs to be lowered down and probably rotated a little bit. The thing to bear in mind actually is obviously this, uh, this terrace is curving upwards at either end. So, um, Inevitably, figures need to be rotated to uh, to sit on its surface correctly. Sort of looking at where the, both the contact points are, and, uh, and again, this is often the way to rectify it. see if that's uh, even visible. <laughs> Let's just move the camera a little bit here. Um, what I'm going to do oh, that's fine I think We can still see a couple up well, which is cool. If I can move them along a bit. I'm going to take turn that guy off for now, I think. Um, I think it might bring her further along. I'm going to zoom to her again and adjust her placement. Uh, she appears to need rotating a little bit more vertically relative to the landscape. I don't want somebody else in the pool. So uh, I'm going to go to the content browser and uh, see what we've got. Just referring back to my shopping cart. I can probably get away with putting somebody else in here. 
directly in the pool. I'm sure I have somebody. Yeah, that one's good. Judy posed 12. Uh, where are we? There we go. So I'm going to do a, again, a 30k native uh, merger into the scene. I'm going to utilize again the tool to uh, transfer things. Um, uh, transfer. And then I'm going to tell it to go to. Uh, let's just make sure it's selected probably that it is. I'm going to transfer to this guy. Which she will do in a minute. I think she's just still loading in her textures. There we go. She just squashed him flat. Um, so scale, let's sort that out on her as well. So that should be, uh, 0 0.1, 0 0.1, apply, and then 0 0.8, which is the same scale. Perfect. Right. So I'm going to put her in the pool. somewhere a bit nearer to this end. Um, of course she's going to give away how shallow the pool really is. But that's okay. Because our guy here, as far as anybody else is concerned, he's on his knees. So, um, I think I'm going to put her a bit further forward. Not that way. Just in the X direction, please. That kind of works. Um, let's go back to the uh, other habitat cam. I'll just place her. On the floor. Uh, do we want a rotated? No, you'd be looking at the view, wouldn't you? <laughs> Perfect. In fact, uh, just looking at this, I think I'm going to take this character, despite the fact I've moved her around already, and put her on the, the next deck down. So she's just walking down here. Uh, so let's go to this habitat cam. In fact, I didn't need to come out of that view. waiting for the uh, scene to refresh. Uh, pressing O to zoom to uh, our other woman. She's going to be right down here. Uh, but I need to go back to this viewpoint to see where I need to place her, so uh, well, she may have gone too far the other way, let's see. Yeah. I need her to be around here somewhere, I think. Oh, 
Oh, it's not bad, I guess. Okay, so I'm going to place her. I'm going to place her there because uh, some of the foliage might get in the way of her. I'll put her anywhere in the middle or even at the edge. So uh, back to that camera and press O to zoom in. And just a minor adjustment. There we go. Okay, uh, I'm liking the look of that. I do want to check on these people. I know I can get away with because I'm not seeing anything, but I just want to check they're not sort of intersecting the uh, wall too greatly. Um, uh, it's that bit. Most people there, isn't it? So click on. Oh, there we go. Oh, that's perfect. Um, I'm going to stick on the mesh. I'm not sure what res these are, the ones in the content library. They look like the 30k ones, anyway. What I'm going to do, uh, I'll put all these figures again in the in the people uh, group. But I'm going to add um, a compositing tag because I don't want these to have um, any ambient occlusion on them. I don't think they really need it. Um, so I want them to have GI. But what I'm going to do now as well is, is go in and tweak the materials. Uh, oh, that's quite handy. Um, that would be if they're all in the same layer. Uh, and I'm going to just select it on some of the models, uh, like this guy here, um, and make it make the material wetter, uh, altering the the uh, reflectivity. So that's this material here. I'm just going to switch this to quick shading and reflectance. Uh, skin. So in this case, what I'm going to do is uh, turn the Fresnel down and just turn up reflection strength. And the roughness down. Just do it about there. And then we'll do the same for this character here. Which is that material. I'm going to turn down the Fresnel, Fresnel, whichever you prefer. Uh, and in the skin, I'm going to uh, lower the uh, roughness. Uh, increase the reflection strength to make her look more wet. Okay, I'll give that a go. So I'm going to give that a render um, and see how that's all looking. I kind of feel like this character here should probably be a little bit further up this way. Yeah. 
make sure she's not standing inside the floor. Okay, I think we can get away with that. So there you go. Basically, uh, there's a bunch of the uh, render people imported and uh, put into position. So I'm just going to set off a render uh, and we'll come back and look at that afterwards. The only things now that are really left to do, um, are I'm going to add some of these sort of lounges down into this area here. I'd like to maybe put some um, kayaks or something. Um, and, uh, and then potentially the final thing is I will add in uh, a NASA image of Earth. I, I could certainly use a uh, rendered one. I can, I've can. i got rigs for the Earth I've already created, but um, I don't want to make this scene any more dense than it is. I may well just use a, a NASA image and just have that other little bit of realism in there. So uh, I'll render this and we'll come back afterwards. Okay, welcome back folks. Um, I did a render of the uh, last setup, um, the last scene that we uh, were working on. I did actually modify a couple of things I think I think I moved a couple of the figures um, their placement from where they were in the uh, in the previous setup um, I certainly moved this female over here um, let me zoom in so you can see it better uh, this is a 7k render by the way 7,000 pixels um, it took a uh, an enormous amount of time to render <laughs> It took about uh, 38 hours, um, which is probably the longest render I've done for a long time. So um, obviously I need to uh, optimize and uh, cut back a little bit, but there is an awful lot of stuff going on, a lot of stuff being rendered. Um, but uh, I think, I was using a physical render of course, and I set it down to about three or five. Um, and I think I can probably get away with uh, raising that um, that setting up to maybe even about 10, um, given the scale of the render, doing it at 7,000 pixels. I think I can probably sort of excuse it. I think it'll be okay. Um, but yeah, I moved this female over to a position next to this guy here, a sort of conversational bit of humoured banter going on there. Um, and in turn, moved this female further back into the, further back in the pool. Uh, and other than that, I think it's pretty much as it was. But um, just want to show you the, uh, the quality and the, the finish of this image is looking great and these tree models are superb I'm really pleased with the way these came out and the uh, distribution of these uh, ones inside the colony itself and this you know is a random idea this I don't you know I didn't really know what I was going to do there. I just wanted to make that a little bit more interesting uh, I'm quite pleased with the way this looks uh, I don't really know what the purpose of this is and I don't think we need to worry about explaining it particularly but um, maybe it's just nice maybe it's heating maybe it's mood lighting who knows um, but it's, uh, it's come out well. And I think all of these, all the effort and time spent on all these little touches has uh, been worthwhile really. Uh, and the landscape looks pretty good in the distance. This is an untouched, uh, render by the way. I haven't done any post work on it other than just to boost contrast a little bit. Uh, and you can see there where the two terrains join, um, where this is the end of our main terrain or somewhere in between these two. I think they're overlapping a little bit. There's a line there and a line there. So I'd have to sort of uh, smooth this out, retouch this a little bit just to lose that, but it's not that evident particularly. Um, I think, uh, you know, I did consider putting a little bit of blurring in, depth of field blurring, um, but really given the, uh, the scale and distance of this render, plus we've got the fog going in there, it kind of gives the effect of being a little bit, well, slightly uh, softer there, which is obviously down to the, the uh, physical renderer um, and the amount of uh, samples that it's using but uh, it's pretty sharp up close so uh, that's all good um, I did actually add as well the canoes I talked about um, I don't know if I'd added these characters in the last uh, in the last video but uh, I added a couple of kids there playing football um, and a couple here walking on the beach and uh, somebody there laying out um, I, think I ended up using about 16 or 17 of the uh, render people they were very useful um, obviously added the kayaks 
uh, next to the water. Um, and I think, I, again, I haven't done any post work yet. I probably will do some retouch on this and sort of make this blend a little better where they get the edges of the water here and here as well. Um, and just add a little bit of uh, final painterly touches really just to the edges, just to make it look a little bit more integrated, I think. Um, and, I, and certainly, oh, this is another thing I added. Um, I modeled a a train finally for the uh, the line down here, the monorail type thing. Um, it's uh, It's got like a little slot in there where it sort of attaches to, like it's suspended monorail really. Uh, so I just, it's a very simple model. I just did it in um, cinema met with uh, hypernerves or sorry, uh, subsurface. I'll say again, subdivision surfaces. And um, that was it really. Just made it look a little bit sort of futuristic and stuck a couple of uh, funky light things on the front. And that's it. Uh, and I think I probably added these as well. I can't remember whether we'd done that or covered this, but I've simply made a graphic in Photoshop of this you know, this alpha and beta, assuming like they've got numbers for these different decks and the different colors. And it's the same, I've done it the same for the brown and the blue as well. Um, just came up with a quick idea for it. And in fact, the, the idea of the graphic itself is that you've got the ring and you've got a sort of a small faded circle there and a bigger circle there. The idea being that this optimal placement of this particular colony would be, according to uh, various things I've read about that NASA have said, would be sort of between um, the earth and the moon because it would be a perfect sort of zero or a negative or balanced gravity point I think between the two so uh, that was the, the thought behind that graphic um, that's it really that's uh, that's the first uh, major or high res render I've done uh, I will certainly go in and do some more which I will add to my website and to this project uh, which I will publish on my site and hopefully have a few more for Max on to show off uh, at the same time as the tutorial. So um, I hope you enjoyed this. I know it's been a very, very long haul. Uh, it's probably, well, it's a lot longer than I expected it would be, but then realistically having done images like this before, I do know how long they can take. And uh, I think probably some of the ones I've done before, like the other, the, the disc color, circular colony or cylinder colony, sorry, probably uh, took about the same amount of time. Um, but, uh, it's, uh, I hope you're able to, uh, go through it all and uh, enjoy it and pick up, pick up a few tips along the way. Uh, and maybe it's inspired you to, uh, to set about doing your own image of a, of a similar subject or something completely different. But, uh, I think you'll, uh, agree that there's an awful lot you can achieve in Cinema 4D and actually not really needing to go anywhere else for, for creating, for using, you know, or modeling uh, landscape features and such like. You've just got to import a few, or buy a few assets or import them from the Cinema 4D library. Um, or if you're very lucky and got some uh, a generous uh, donation from uh, a vendor online, that's really useful. Um, so good luck and uh, any comments you've got, any thoughts, any critiques, or any, ow, my head hurts, that was far too long, then please post any comments wherever this is posted by Max and myself. And uh, I look forward to uh, doing something else for you soon. Cheers. Bye.